unfortunately guys i turned into a ghost over the course of the last day um so you're gonna have to deal with ghosting scoundrel as you can see Ooh, spooky uh, i'm not even wearing a green top by the way this is a this is a uh, blue top um but apparently my chroma key has got some kind of there's some sort of green element in here i guess it might be even turquoise maybe my top is turquoise i don't know but you're dealing with ghosting scoundrel today so um spooky ghosting scoundrel doesn't have a body uh, we're going to be talking about the importance of missile control today. And I had a game um, versus this guy, Ember Ghost, who's running an Inferno Nod air deck, very similar to an Avatar air deck that I was running myself. Um, and I kind of want to go through it because he did have the upper hand versus me, but as you can see, I won. And a lot of it came down to missile control. And I'm going to go through a couple of games. Um, I had a few games today that I think I did. I'll do one GDI and one Nod. And I think I just want to go through some of the core fundamentals of these games. I'm just going to quickly drop the sound just a little bit. There we go. So, he opened with militants, and that means he's obviously looking to scout very early on, maybe checking if I've gone double harvester so he can respond. But he goes for the militants and then goes for my uh, laser troopers. Now, I'm running a fairly heavy deck, so look what I do with my laser troopers. And this is the point, the first point with uh, missile control that I'm going to talk about. I'm trying to bait him off the platform as much as possible because, again, I run a double harvester deck here. Um, and so my my primary goal is to stall things out. I, I kind of want to stall things out in this game. So as you can see, I'm just running around this uh, small rock on the top side of the map trying to keep his uh, militants running off the platform over and over again. And now I'm going to start to shepherd him with my flamer troopers uh, away from the platform. I actually know that he went double harvester here. I could hear him build it and there were no other units coming onto the field. So remember, sounds in this game are really important. So I heard him build the second harvester. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't really in a position to start contesting. So I switch my, I switch the way that I deal with this game now. I actually have the dominant units on the field. He has two sets of riflemen versus my one flamer uh, squad on the bottom side of the map. And I've also got my flamer squad on the top side of the map as well. Um, so... I switch up the way that I'm playing. I'm playing for first missile to put pressure on him now. So this is a decision that I have made knowing that my double harvester came out a little bit later. Now he is super clever here. Watch what he does with his militants. He actually moves his militants and blocks my harvester from getting onto the Tiberian patch and then puts out a banshee on the top side of the field to pressure my top harvester. Splits my harvester pressure. He's trying to strangle my economy and actually he did a really good job. <laughs> but look what look what I actually managed to do with my harvester as I was moving it around to my other Tiberian point. I actually stop him getting onto the bottom platform to contest. And what I want to hammer home to you guys here is that whilst the idea that this guy had was good splitting the pressure between my harvester blocking my harvester on the bottom side of the map kind of forgot about the missile and you'll notice this a lot as you go through masters especially people have an absolute obsession with killing your harvesters when actually they forget that the win condition is the missile so he doesn't actually have enough on the gate on the platforms to even contest the first missile so he's now going to have to resign himself to just trying to again limit my economy get to a point where he's able to put out some of his big units um and that is where he's going to try and win the game i'm not going to let him do that though the way that i'm not going to let him do that and you might say to yourself well scoundrel you're obviously massively behind in economy now he pressured your top harvester he stopped your second harvester from farming he's got a banshee that's going to chase down your harvester on the bottom side of the, the, the field I don't mind that much because if I can force him to use all that Tiberium to contest the second missile, then actually I'm not in, even in that bad of a position. And I do have a Phantom on my deck at level 11, which is very good versus these air units that he's pumping out. So he's going to chase down my Harvester on the bottom side of the field. I'm not, again, I'm not super fussed at the outcome of this situation because here comes my phantom i was saving up for this phantom deals very swiftly with his uh, his banshee and he actually starts to respond himself now watch what i do with my phantom this is something that you'll notice with phantoms especially really important um just leaving it in a defensive position is really strong so leaving your phantom in a defensive position is super strong because it forces the enemy to walk into it and your phantom's going to get the two shots this is especially good versus banshees um and hammerheads less so versus an equal level um phantom matchup because what is actually really going to happen at the end of the day here is we're basically going to end up just killing each other 
so he's trying to put pressure on, but he's, he hasn't really got to the end part of his deck yet. He hasn't really got to the point in the deck where it's it's uh, super strong. And that's because, again, my pressure on the missiles is forcing him to build units that he doesn't really want to build. When you're playing a Nod Air deck, your primary goal is to get out the Inferno and control choke points with the Inferno. But he is spending 100 Tiberium every single time on Phantoms because he wants to beat my uh, superiority that my Phantoms had. And you know what a great answer in my deck to Phantoms is? It's going to be my laser troopers. They're really, really strong. Then he's going to respond with venoms. And you know what I respond to venoms with? I respond to them with more phantoms. Um, so overall, we won simply from just pressuring that first missile. He was so obsessed with killing my harvesters that he kind of forgot to actually even contest the missile. And that resulted in the win for me. So what you need to, to think about when you're playing games is, is try not to get too hung up on saying, well, can I go aggressive versus his double harvester? Can I kill his double harvester? How can I pet pressure it? How can I kill his harvester? Don't worry about the harvesters, okay? I didn't touch his harvesters once, or almost once in that game. I think, I think my laser troopers got some shots on it. But I didn't actually pressure his harvesters in that game at all, yet I still came out on top because I got the first missile and I constantly pressured the second missile, meaning he was never actually able to get to the point of using the units that he wanted to spend his Tiberium on, which was technically the Infernos. Now, obviously, I had the counter in my deck to the Infernos and the Phantoms, but he actually never built that unit, so he never got to the win condition of his deck because we just had constant pressure on the missile pads constant pressure on the missile pads is worth 10 times more than trying to kill the enemy harvester from the get-go if you charge and win that first missile the enemy is going to be forced to build things they don't want to build simply because they have to win the game if they don't contest your sicker missile properly they don't win the game and that's the the nod game that i had today which i think was interesting and it showed you me showed me getting beaten up on my side of the field but me winning because i had the win conditions in my head which is the missile clearly painted out the next replay that I want to look at involved some really um, interesting movement of units in the start of the game, which I think is really important to talk about. Ignore my ghost t-shirt, ignore the difference in levels between these two, uh, between me and the, my opposing player, simply because although unit levels definitely played into this, that's not really what I want to get at with this video. What I want you to watch is the movement of my war dogs in the first 30 seconds. He moves onto the pad, I move off the pad. He moves on the pad, I move off the pad. Yellow is the golden rule for aggro decks. If you see yellow on the missile, you're going to have a bad time. You want to make sure that whatever happens, either it's charging red or charging blue, and then the end goal being that one of you ends up wrestling control of the missile at the end, hopefully you, um, with an aggro deck specifically. Now, there are going to be times where it is going to turn yellow and it's going to be very difficult to avoid um, that situation. For instance, right now, I really wanted to use my jump jet troopers to, uh, to put pressure on his MLRS, which he just saw pop up right here. So unfortunately, I can't leave my jump jet troopers on the back platform, which means I'm, I just kind of have to live with this situation where, um, unfortunately, I can't actually charge the missile the way that I wanted. However, considering I know this is probably not a uh, tech deck and it's not a double harvester deck, I'm not as fussed about it. If this was a tech deck, I'd have got out a set of war dogs and thrown them up to the top right hand pa platform. But you can see here that all of this early game was about charging that missile as soon as physically possible. And although I'm not going up against the tech deck, the actual lessons from that first 30 seconds are really important for you guys at home to learn how to make sure that you're in control of that first missile. Now some good micro around his war dogs means that I did end up getting this first missile really easily and uh, and that puts me in a really good position going forward in this game. Um, but you know that is what I, I kind of want to hammer home to you and you know whatever happens at the, the outcome of this game the rest of this game is um, me just using hammerheads to control the skies and using the MLRS to try and control the vehicle side of things. If you're looking for the first missile, the enemy who's got a tech deck is going to want to contest it as much as possible. So if you're playing a tech deck, yellow is good. You want to contest that missile as much as you physically can. If you're playing an aggro deck, you don't want that missile pad to ever be yellow. Yellow stalls the game. As the game goes on, Tiberium income naturally ramps up. No matter if they've got a double harvester or not, the Tiberium income goes up over the course of the game. So the longer that you give your opponent, the easier it is for them to get their expensive units out. And if they get their expensive units out, you're going to have a bad time. So it's all about just putting pressure on that first missile, either letting your opponent charge it for you or you charging it. But it has to be blue or red. It has to be blue or red. You want that missile to fire very quickly. I had a really nice guy in the Discord ask me um, why he was struggling to get his units out um, versus people with heavy tech decks and, and you know what was going on there. 
Unfortunately, I, you know, I had a look at his replay and he was he's letting the, the first missile stall too much. That first missile was stalling to such a ridiculous level um, that unfortunately he was he was just letting them have too much time to ramp up their Tiberium income. So you want to make sure that that first missile you are in complete control of. And then, like you see, the same principles apply here, kind of on the second missile. I'm just going to use my war dogs to body block this pit bull, and I get this second missile uh, and win the game. But those lessons from the first 30 seconds are the ones that will serve you the best when playing an aggro deck. Absolutely serve you the best when playing an aggro deck. Yellow is bad. It wants to be red or blue, and then you take control of it when it matters most. I hope that clears things up and I hope you guys get a bit of idea about missile control because that is a really important part of this game. Really, really important part of this game. And knowing the combinations of units which need to go where and contesting at the right time is a small micro mechanic that you will pick up over time. But just understanding the point of an aggro deck is to make it not be yellow and the point of the tech deck is to make it be yellow as, as long as physically possible on that first missile. You'll, you'll end up learning what you need to do. All right, I'll see you soon.